High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us back to Victorian England in his spine-tingling story entitled Dress to Kill. Yes, well, it's coming in on time or haven't oh, it? Oh, Walter, I can't wait to see her again. I wonder if she's changed. Be long now. Oh, there she is. Which one? She's seen us. Look, you mean that nothing. pretty one over there? Yes, she's waving. Oh, she's rather gorgeous, isn't she? Oh, Uncle Walter, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, Marion. Oh, Marion, it's lovely to have you here. Oh, it has been a long journey, but from what I have seen, it was worth it. Oh, the countryside was beautiful, Alice. Oh, let me introduce you to Uncle Walter. Delighted to meet you, my dear. So you are the Uncle Walter Alice talked about so much when she stayed with me in Paris. That's right. Sweet. Oui, it is as though I already know you. Manham House is three miles from here, over towards the sea. Victor is waiting outside the station with the carriage. Victor? <laughs> He's the odd job man Mama employs. Oh. A bit sinister looking, but quite harmless, really. He is the unemployed village idiot, so to speak, <laughs> until my sister took pity on him. He works willingly, though. Well, young ladies, uh, shall we go? Oh, thank you so much to talk to you It was the middle of July, 1877, when Marion LeBlanc visited her friend's home close to the small Cornish village of Trigeny. It was a return visit, for Alice Cotter had stayed a month at Marion's home the previous year, which had been the result of their close friendship at a Swiss finishing school for young ladies they'd both attended for two years. Marion and Alice were both exceptionally beautiful, but were, as yet, both innocent of a close relationship with the opposite sex. Alice's father had died the previous year, and she lived only with her mother and her uncle Walter in a rambling old manor house set in some of the most beautiful scenery to be found in Cornwall. Before the manor were tall cliffs that fell steeply down to the sea and small hidden coves and rocky beaches. Behind the old house was Trigeny Woods, several acres of woodland that had, in previous centuries, been owned by a now ruined abbey. It was a place of beauty, rather than the setting for an impending day of horror. Well, there's quite a lot you can show, Marion. There's the ruined abbey, for instance. Oh, to be honest, the place gives me the shivers, Mama. Oh, nonsense, child. Why, the place reeks of history and interest. Tell Marion about it, Walter. Yes, all right. It was uh, built in the ninth century. At that time, the monks owned most of the land hereabouts. And it flourished right through to the 16th century in the Reformation, when Henry VIII had it burnt down and the monks killed or dispersed. Since that time, of course, nature has taken over and made the ruins a place of great beauty. <laughs> Brown, crumbling walls covered in ivy, trees growing up through the paved cloister, and flowers clinging in the arched windows. <laughs> Yet it's quite breathtaking at this time of the year. I still think it's creepy, Uncle Walter. Oh, no. What do you think, Marion? I would like to see it, Alice. History interests me, as you know. <laughs> to be truthful, I, I'm not even sure I know the way. Why don't you take them tomorrow morning, Walter? The walk will do you all good. Yes, I think it's a good idea. That is, if the girls don't object. <laughs> oh, it would be nice for you to accompany us, oh, Monsieur Cotter. I don't mind, as long as you're with us, Uncle Walter. No, it'll be a pleasure, my dears. Uh, Bertha, bring me a fresh bottle of Madeira from the cellar. Well, Marion, uh, how did you enjoy our English cooking? I was warned before I left that food in England is basic and tasteless. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> what I have eaten this evening would make these false advisors cringe with shame. <laughs> I shall pass the compliment on to cook exactly as you put it, my dear. <laughs> I just hope she understands. <laughs> <laughs> what time will we leave in the morning, Uncle Walter? Oh, I think shortly after breakfast. Say about nine to half past. 
And don't forget to wear sensible walking shoes. Yes. And we'll stroll the long way across the cliffs and cut back to the woods. It's quite far, and uh, yes, I'm getting too old to carry young ladies, <laughs> no matter how pretty they are. Who's that? It is, it is I, Marian. Oh. Oh. Oh, I, I turn thought... up your lamp. Uh, oh, what was it you thought, Alice? Oh, nothing. Can't you sleep? Is it the strange surrounding? Oh, perhaps. We oui, perhaps. My room is big and, and lonely, and, and sometimes I see... Oh, no. It is nothing. Just my imagination, you understand. Oh, there's nothing to be frightened of. The old house isn't haunted or anything like that. Oh, no. I, I was not thinking of ghosts. <laughs> it is that... Well, when I close my eyes to sleep, I, I see the image of this Victor, the man who drove us here from the station. Oh. I must admit, he does have a face to remember. It, it's not ugly or, or misshapen. Oh, his but... wide, dark eyes and... And turned down lower lip like a baby that drools. Oh. Did you see the way he stared at me, Alice? Yes. As, as a child stares at, at a cream cake, longingly. Oh, he looks at me the same way, Marion. I, I suppose I've come accustomed to it now. I complained to Mama several times after I came home from Switzerland, but, but she laughed and, and said he meant no harm, oh. really. She told me it was his strange way of showing respect. But the man... Is a little mad, we? <laughs> a borderline case, I suppose. But he works hard and, and gives no trouble. Where does he sleep? In the stable. Oh, too close for my peace of mind. Alice, tell me honestly, when I opened the door, who did you think it was? You were very startled. All right. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. But you've guessed it, I can see that. It's Victor, Marion. Oh, he could he could quite easily get into the house. Well, if you don't object too strongly, Alice, I'll stay here with you. <laughs> you are most welcome. I was about to suggest it. Hmm. Smell that fresh breeze coming off the sea. Like nectar. Oh, it is paradise. The sea, the wildflowers, the deep blue sky. I never thought of England as being like this. I've, I've changed my mind about going into the woods, Uncle Walter. No, oh, why's that? Is something wrong? You can't get to the Abbey any other way. No, it, it's just... Well, that's the third time I've seen Victor. He keeps following us and, and hiding when he thinks he's been seen. Oh, bless me. Take no notice of the fool. He's interested in Marion. You know how fascinated these country people are with strangers. He's merely curious, nothing else. Well, I don't like having him follow us like that. Why, well, he's, he's positively furtive. No, it's just his odd way, that's all, my dear. Just ignore him. Oh, I wish I could. Imagine him as he would a friendly dog. With staring eyes and a drooling mouth. Oh, that's not how I've seen friendly dogs. Oh, please, Uncle Walter, can't you tell him to go back to the house? Good gracious, my dear, your stay in Switzerland certainly didn't cure your schoolgirl imaginings. Don't you think she's being a trifle silly, Marion? I, I do not, Monsieur Carter. I feel the same way about this man, Victor. Oh, very well. Do you know where he is at present? He dodged behind that outcrop of rocks when we stopped walking. And then he looked out a moment ago. Look, you wait here and I'll speak to him. Mm, Marion, he's frightened of Uncle Walter, so you'll soon go back home after a sharp reprimand. Personally, I think Mama's been far too soft with the rich... Very often, he's, he's been quite insolent towards me. Victor, come out of there. Come along. I know where you're hiding. Victor, come out this instant. There. Now tell me why you're following us. Answer me, Victor. What are you doing here? I like the pretty girl, Master. I beg your pardon. Did I hear you all right? The pretty, pretty foreign girl. 
I wonder, Master. How dare you? Get back to the house. I'll deal with you later. No, Master. I won't do what you say anymore. Victor wants the pretty girl. You will do as I say. Victor, put down that stone. Don't you dare threaten me. Ow. Oh! Alice, Marion, run for your lives. He's gone there. Ow! For several petrifying seconds, the girl stared in horror as Victor beat Walter to death with a large stone. Then they ran for their lives away from the cliffs towards the woods where, they hoped, it would be easier to elude a pursuer. Oh, here, Marion. Over here. He killed him, Alice. He just killed him like that, like, like a wild animal. Shh. He's certain to follow us. But I think if we skirt the edge of the woods and, and try to get back to the house, we'll be safe. But do you know the way? No, but, oh. but I have a fair sense of the direction, I, I think. Victor isn't very bright, so, so it's just a matter of fitting our wits against his, all right? Oh. So from now on, we must keep off the path and move slowly. Shh. Listen. I can hear him movement. Oh. Keep still. Oh, it is Victor. Going along the path we have just left. It might take a while before he realizes we've branched off. So keep still for a few seconds more. He might have sharp ears. There. I think it's safe now. Follow behind me, Marion. Why, Alice? Why did he do it? I have no idea. His mind must have snapped or something. Oh. And I, I don't think he liked Uncle Walter very much. I, I can't think of any other reason. Are you sure this is the right way? What makes you think it isn't? Well, the trees and undergrowth seem to be more dense, wilder, as though we are going deeper into the wood. No, you could be right. The problem is not being able to see a landmark. Everything looks the same. Look, we're coming onto a path. Oh, there is the wall. See, there, through the trees. The abbey. You were right. We haven't come deeper into the woods. Oh, we could hide in the ruin. No, oh, I, I don't like the place, but... I'll admit it's safer than plowing on blindly. Come on. Let's see if there's a good hiding place. It is just ivy-covered ruins. Oh. See how thickly this ivy is growing up the wall. You push it apart like this. We oui. See? There's a space oh. you can hide behind. Oui, oui, it is a good idea. Oh, it's quite dirty, but I don't think we should worry about our linen at a time like this. Oh, but perhaps this madman has gone back to your house. Oh, it is possible. Oh, your mother might be in danger from him. Oh, no. Victor likes Mama too much to do her harm. Besides, the servants will protect her. <gasps> He's here, Alice. Well, I saw a shadow past that arched doorway. Oh, oui. Look, there he is. Oh, no. He's searching for us. Oh, he must have been able to track us here. Some country people are very good at it. Oh, then he will find us. Oh, the only chance is to wait and, and hope. Remember, where we crossed to this ivy was cobblestones, huh? Perhaps we left no footprints. But he must know we are somewhere in the abbey ruins. It is only a matter of time before he thinks to look behind the ivy. We will try to creep away and, and go through the arch to our left. Oh, it's too late. He's coming towards us. Oh. Oh, praise be to heaven. Oh, he, he stopped about him. Victor stood still, listening and waiting, a narrow smile on his drooping lips. He knew his terrified quarry was close. He sniffed and looked about at the ivy-covered walls. The two girls cowered low, hardly daring to breathe. Marion had one hand held out, slightly parting the ivy leaves to keep Victor in view. And it was this which was her undoing. A wasp settled on the back of her wrist and stung. <gasps> Oh, oh, quickly, Mary! Run! Alice broke from cover and raced for the arched doorway. Marion tried to follow, stumbled, tears in her eyes, and fell sprawled on the cobblestones. She tried to rise, only to find herself in Victor's triumphant grip. Oh, 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 oh my pretty one. My pretty, pretty. Oh, 
let me go. Alice, help me. Keep still, my pretty, and I won't hurt. Oh, get your hands away from me. I don't want oh. to slap your beautiful face, my little one. Please don't make me. Realizing Marion was not behind her, Alice hurried back and glanced through the arch and saw Marion struggling against Victor, who had both arms about her in a bear hug. Alice's eyes spotted the heavy stone. She stepped forward and picked it up. She was directly behind Victor, who was concentrating on his victim. Oh. <laughs> oh. Keep still, my pretty one. Keep still. Oh. I will have to hurt you. Oh. Oh. Run, Marion! Oh. Victor crumpled to his knees under the weight of Alice's blow. As the two girls hitched up their long skirts and ran off, he held his head in both hands and rocked backwards and forwards, groaning. Marion and Alice ran until they were close to exhaustion, glancing back sometimes to see if Victor had given chase. But there was no sign of him. I burst the way. Yes. Yes. Oh. Just long enough to regain our wit. Oh. Oh, I'm sure that monster must be somewhere behind us. The trees are beginning to thin out. So we must be more careful. Oh, it's a pity you did not hit him again and again when there was a child. I was too frightened to think clearly. Oh. All I could see was his, his horrible big hand tearing oh. at you. And... Oh, my, it was so horrible. Oh, yes, see, Alice, it was very brave of you to return and help me. I was about ready to swoon from fear. When Marion and Alice had regained their breath, they hurried on until they came out of the screen of trees and found themselves not far from the clifftops and the place where they had first entered the wood. Home and safety was less than a mile away along the top of the high cliffs. Now, out in the open, they kept a careful lookout, half expecting to see Victor burst out from the woods in hot pursuit. It was only when they'd halved the distance to home that the truth became known. Oh, my dress, it is ruined. Get on, Marion. Come over to the side. Pourquoi? What is it? Do you see it? It's a hole in the ground, almost covered from sight by the long grass. Oh, we! Oui. I could have fallen down. What is it for? It's a, it's a kind of blowhole or something. You see, deep under there is a cave. And when the tide is high and, and the sea is stormy, the air blows out of the hole with great force. Oh, it is very dangerous. I've never known anyone to fall down it before. But some sheep and dogs have been lost. Come on. We mustn't waste time. The house can be seen from the top of the next hill. Stay where you are, Marion. What? He's there. Victor. Oh, holy heaven. He's between us and the house. Waiting for us. But how did he get ahead of us? Oh, he must have known all the shortcuts. What's worse, he's... He's slowly making his way in this direction. Alice, why are you staring like that? The blowhole. We must run if he is coming. We cannot hide down the hole. Can we? Heavens, no. But if he sees us running, he's, he's certain to catch one of us again. Oh, it is better than standing here and waiting for him to take her. We must outwit him, Marion. There must be a way to make him fall down the blowhole. But as you say, he knows the country well. He will know it is here and see it. It is no good, Alice. Only a blind man could fall down there. Yes, you have it. Make him blind. How can you do that, Alice? C'est impossible. Oh, there's a certain way to make him blind to all but one thing. What do you mean? I, I don't understand. Oh, oh, my man. I thought French girls were wise to the ways of the world. Why do you think Victor was chasing us? Oh, really? Oh. Are you so naive that you don't know what would have happened to you if I hadn't hit him? Ah, uh, oui. I do know. But I do not like to think of such a thing. Well, think of it now, Marion. In order to save ourselves, I, I think we must lose a little of our maiden modesty. Oh, still, I, I cannot understand what it is you have in your mind. Oh, there's no time left to explain. Oh, there he is, looking at us. Oh, in a few moments, he will be here. Look, don't panic, no matter what happens, okay? Just just beckon to him with a smile, as, as though you've decided to become friends with him. Stand a little behind me and do exactly as I do. And remember, Marion... This might be the only possible way we can save ourselves. From a distance, the big man stopped and stared at his two intended victims. He was puzzled, unable to understand why they'd so suddenly decided to stand their ground. And was that a mischievous smile he detected on their faces as they looked back at him? Then he started to amble forward, his long arms swinging loosely at his sides, 
blood streaking the side of his face and matting his thick, dark hair. Both girls stood close by the edge of the meter-wide hole, forcing smiles as though it were some part of a child's game. And then Alice started to slowly undress. Uh, Alice, what? Why are you doing that? Just do oh. the same and keep smiling. But I can't. It's do it's it, not... Marion. Can you think of a better way to keep his eyes up from the ground? But Alice, quickly, Marion. Hello, Victor. I'm sorry I hit you so hard. I, I didn't mean to hurt you. We won't run away again. Come on over. As you can see, we've decided to be friendly. Victor had stopped again, taken aback at the sight that met his eyes. He swallowed, looked furtively from side to side, then continued to walk towards the girls, eyes fixed on the astonishing sight, his mind beginning to burn with desire and anticipation. I refuse to remove any more of my clothing, Alice. It is not... Keep deep. smiling and take it all off if it's necessary. Oh. It's better than dying. Be quiet. He's almost on to us. Well, Victor, how do you like me? Why, this Alice, you are... Oh. Oh. For a brief instant, Victor had teetered on the edge of the hole, trying to pull himself back from eternity. And then he was gone. Screaming into the depths. Frozen with mingled relief and horror, Marion and Alice stared down the black hole and shuddered. The two girls walked sadly back towards the distant manor house, where they told Mrs. Cotter of the terrible events that had befallen them and her brother. She was overcome by grief at the loss of her brother, but soon dispatched a messenger to report the murder to the village constable. Oh, such a shock, my poor Walter. And I feel so responsible for the frightening ordeal you've had to experience. Oh, you can't blame yourself, Mama. How could you have possibly known that Victor would... Would turn out like he did. I should have listened to what you said oh. about the way he he looked at you. I knew he had a touch of well, cruelty in his nature. You see, when he was a boy, he killed a number of animals. Two dogs because he didn't like their barking. And one of the sheep because it strayed. He was unbalanced. He was irresponsible. But killing animals is not the same as killing people, is it? One can lead to the other. Oh, I should have sent him away a long time ago. It was, It was just that... What? Well, I felt that it would be a heartless thing to do. He worked well, and who else would have given him a job? Oh, I'm sorry particularly for you, Marion. Must have given you a terrible impression of our country. Oh, I think it could also have happened in France. I have told Alice that I would like to stay. That is if you do not mind, Madame Cotter. Oh, not at all, my dear. <laughs> oh, bless Madame. you. I think you should have a glass of brandy in case you're sickening for a cold. It's sunny, but there's a chill wind blowing off the sea. <laughs> yes, Mama. We have good reason to know that. <laughs> High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal. <laughs>